had the opportunity to work with different organizations and I have now over six years experience uh, in the international development uh, field. I'm now uh, working with the African Development Bank as a program person at the uh, African Climate Change Fund. I also had the opportunity to work with different organizations in Cote d'Ivoire and across West Africa. So I'm a period development practitioner. And you said six years of experience. If I count that, that is taking us 2018 to 2012. Um, can you just tell us uh, when you joined Waxi as an intern and what role you played at Waxi? Well, I joined Wax, uh, Waxi uh, in 2012, uh, particularly in January 2012. Um, I worked for uh, six months and I had the opportunity to get uh, renewed again my internship because it was a six month renew renewable. It was renewed again for six more months, so I worked fully uh, one full year uh, at Waxi. It was a very, very interesting opportunity that I had because it helped building my, uh, my capacity, uh, professional capacity, most especially what I learned, uh, one of the things that I learned which actually shaped my career today is uh, in program management. I was a program intern and I had the opportunity to write proposal, write reports and also uh, work in the field of uh, capacity uh, building. I, do, uh, I did a bit of communications and today I can assure you that from where I am, I'll have a bit of all of this when I'm in terms of uh, program management. Um, I, as I, I present and I'm going to introduce myself because I'm working as a program person. I also uh, do program, I mean in communications in my uh, current job, my current positions, I also do communications. And I'm also um, working in supporting capacity building and training activities. So I think uh, my experience at Waxi uh, for the one year that I had is uh, fairly what shaped my current uh, career. And of course, after Waxi, I joined other organizations which also contributed to grow my capacity that I'm uh, using now for my career. It's good to learn from you that uh, the experience at Waxi contributed in shaping your career. And uh, our listeners will be very particular about, you know, one or two specific skills that to you are the most outstanding that you got from the West Africa Civil Society Institute and most importantly how these skills you know you were able to use them or leverage on them to make specific gains in the international development sector across West Africa. You know the whole um, thing about international development is how to uh, mobilize resources and uh, address the challenge facing communities and for that the one key thing that you have to do is writing proposal and uh, um, submitting that to donors. At Waxi one of the things that I actually uh, learned is how to write a winning proposal both in terms of a training experience because I uh, had the opportunity to benefit some training and writing proposal and also in practice because I work with some of the uh, uh, team there, uh, 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 officers in charge of this field. So I learned from them both practice and theory and I can assure you that the major uh, skill that I developed at Waxi, which uh, right now I mean, I, 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 in, within my current position is helping me and my organization is helping me, is how to write winning proposal. That's helped me for my career, uh, my, my, my work in Nigeria. I had opportunity to work over, I mean, almost three years in Nigeria at this position as a program person, writing proposal for a different organization where I was able to mobilize resources. Uh, for instance, I mobilized um, resource twenty thousand from the uh, twenty thousand dollar, which is a very small amount, uh, to address the issue of statelessness in the northern northeastern part of Nigeria. I also I was able to uh, write a winning proposal which was uh, uh, submitted to raise funds to address the issue of um, women, uh, not women in politics, um, which was very successful. So proposal writing, I can say uh, this, is, uh, this was one of the key uh, skills that I developed at Waxi. Again, I also was, I was able to um, develop skills in terms of uh, uh, communications. 
especially in your writing uh, um, article, raising, uh, I mean, in, um, mobilizing people to address the issue in terms of a, um, um, discussions on the blog and all of the thing, uh, thing like that. It was very useful. Then I was kind of trying my hand because it's, I was not a professional at that, a professional uh, writer. But I can assure you that my experience in um, supporting the, the communication team, especially in this particular field, was uh, I mean was very useful because why right now at the African Development Bank in my unit, I'm also supporting the communication team in this particular area, and I always refer them back to my experience at Waxi. I remember during my interview, I mentioned that I contributed to develop this one. So definitely, um, this was very, it was very useful and I can assure you that my experience, I always mention that my experience at Waxi is what's actually uh, I'm enjoying here because that was where uh, I pick everything that I have now. And I can assure you the whole idea behind the next generation internship program is excellent, it's wonderful because the the initially it was to groom the capacity of uh, young African leaders, but then it went beyond that. It came to a stage whereby not only the build your capacity to serve as a civil society actor, but then you when you, you go beyond that, serving both in civil society and in the international order uh, field as um, uh, 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 that's right as uh, in my career right now. So I think I went. Uh, from civil society to where I am now, but because I was able to develop the skill that uh, Waxi uh, enabled me to develop. So Waxi is not building, is not just building, uh, grooming the, 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 the pool of a young African uh, leader in the civil society sector, but Waxi is doing a tremendous work that is both contributing to civil society and other uh, sector, both government, because some of them left the uh, Waxi program and join government or other uh, field and also in my uh, position. So it's going to be, I mean, it is a very interesting opportunity that I have. You know, talking about this, you know, what just struck, struck me is the element of youth unemployment in Africa, in West Africa, um, for example, and uh, our leaders are currently at the United Nations General Assembly. And one of the key things they are talking about is leveraging on the youth population. You know, I remember uh, uh, Mo Ibrahim had that critique or hit hard on African leaders on how we can be leaving the, the, the youth population, you know, to be losing out from the available jobs or the opportunities that we can provide them with President Kagame also hit hard on that. You know, my question is, how do you see internship as a conduit to curbing youth unemployment on the continent and what advice do you have for stakeholders, be it civil society, be it government, be it private sector, you know, to seize this opportunity of internships to help reduce the high level of unemployment on the continent. Well, I have two uh, perspectives in that one. When we are talking about uh, the, this issue of youth, I was um, uh, giving a conference in uh, Tanzania uh, last, last year, and I had to make this case. Look, you should stop at a point to associate youth with uh, maybe um, employment and youth with uh, sport. With it. No, the need of youth goes beyond that. Youth also want to play a role they want to enjoy a certain, uh, I mean, positions within society. They also want to take a position. So, you, if you look at youth as what well, they need job and so we we'll give them job. Of course, that's good. But then, what about the rest of the the, uh, the activity? I mean, how about the contribution to society? So we should look at that perspective. Now, coming to issue of um, uh, work, youth and work. Of course, that is going to be that is the core. Because if you don't have a job, then you can you are not uh, uh, independent and you can make any decision in society. And one of the key things that most African governments do, uh, I had opportunity to travel around and see what, uh, and I can assure you that what we have, we are facing here in Cote d'Ivoire is not different from what they are facing in Ghana, Burkina Faso or any other country. The challenge, the major challenge is that inadequacy between the training that they have at university and the job market. 
So if you want to uh, maybe bridge the uh, unemployment gap, I mean this gap that I, I mentioned, they should look at this uh, from this perspective first. Now when they are trained, the opportunity for them to have the first job is the major challenge and that's where the internship comes in. The internship comes in where um, how do you identify society, I mean organizations or maybe company that can provide job opportunity and government should play a role, civil society should play a role. Government's role is to give, I mean to provide a very um, uh, conducive environment for um, companies to create more job opportunities and also uh, enable you to have this access to those organizations, those, those companies, which in most cases doesn't uh, appear. If a government is able to work hand in hand with a uh, private uh, sector, that can enable them to bridge this gap. Civil society, the role is to build a capacity, just like an example of uh, a YC doing it. You build a capacity and also you push toward, uh, in terms of policy, for employment, youth employment, advocacy, uh, job that you have, work that you have to do to ensure that government takes this issue of um, youth employment into uh, consideration in designing their policy. They have a very huge amount of money for uh, military, for other uh, I mean, uh, part of the government uh, arms, but then what about uh, creating employment for youth? So that is where civil society should come in, but also civil society is a job provider. Civil so society also is a job provider. How do they also go to the market, I mean, the, the, the labor market, and find you who are qualified and give them the first experience? I can see young, many young people in Cote d'Ivoire, they are graduated, they apply for job, and they ask them for 10 or maybe five years or two, three years experience. How can you expect somebody who just graduated from university to have this experience? And if you are not giving these first years of experience, how is he going to? have these um, uh, numbers of years experience that you are expecting. And that's where civil society can come in. They can also contribute in terms of providing these first years of experience. They can contribute in advocating for policies at national level to be uh, uh, maybe youth friendly in terms of uh, creating uh, employment for you. They can support governments. They can also support civil society, provide uh, opportunity for civil society to, I mean, to, for private sector to create more job in the sector where they are specialized in. For instance, in organizations, the civil society organization work in the field of environment. Is work is uh, their work is to provide job opportunity or maybe uh, business opportunity for private sector in this field, so that they can create uh, more job in this particular field. And of course, they're going to employ young people. So. I wanted to look at it from this different perspective, but again, the most important thing that you want, we, we should stress on is to ensure that there is effective adequacy between uh, training that they are benefiting at university and the labor market. That should be, uh, we contribute to serve this uh, uh, unemployment gap that we have. Now, after that, we can all look at it, who is creating job, is still the role of both uh, government, civil society, and private sector as well.